They're liking it. It's done. Well, almost. Just some little details that we're going to finish up. But come on in. I'll show you what it looks like. So we added some boxwoods and then we found some meat bricks laying around the yard and Blake helped me get a little step out in front of the gate, the door, and then come on in. For now, we have a makeshift feed dish for them. They're going to dust bath over here and then we're going to use the water bucket and eventually it will be hooked up from a rain water collection. They're liking it. You like it? I think you do. Hi, welcome to the Daddy Curbs Farm. This is the tour of the chicken coop. This chicken coop was built using the framework of an old dog kennel. And we thought it would be fun to use as much scrap material as possible attached to the dog kennel frame to make the cutest chicken coop that we could. For my silkies for her silkies. So we got a little intro already. I'd like to go over some of the finer points of the coop, like what was built, why it was built, and how it was built. So when we first walked in, Mama Curbs mentioned that, um, you know, she, she talked about the water bucket and the ramp and where they're going to dust bathe. So let, let's just start right now inside. So the wood ash that we put in here in the corner down here, will be spread out and they'll roll in it and kick it up on themselves and it's just nice to provide an area like that for the chickens so that they can help prevent their skin parasites fleas and ticks and mites and all those things now that's not part of the coop but it is an interesting thing that we do for our chickens not just us many people provide an area for them to dust to bathe but we just do it with wood ash in the corner let's start back on the outside okay and show some of the features of the coop. We'll do a walk around mm -hmm. and then we'll come back inside. Sure. Walk with us. Before we get started on the walk around, let me tell you that some of the things that are not done is the rainwater collection system. That's going to be a set of gutters piped down into some 55 gallon barrels and then uh, hooked into that water bucket back here. That's the Farmer Brad water bucket. You can find the details to that bucket in the description below. One other thing, uh, the uh, point of the roof up here, you can see it's open. When it rains, it does get in there, so we're gonna put some flashing metal over the point of the roof. So that's another detail that's not done. All right, Mama Curbs, tell us. Let me get the camera. Walk us around the coop and tell us some of the features. Well, it has a little window, so that way we can look and peek in and see if they're roosting or what's going on inside, and also for ventilation. I thought that was a nice little feature. It was the last feature we added. Then we have the nest boxes here, and then Daddy Curbs added some rubber here to prevent all the rain water coming down and ruining the wood. So we have that barrier, and then the fancy hooks. So that way, when I want to clean the nest boxes, I can just swoop it out. I like that feature. Nice use of the knees there, sweetheart. <laughs> I can drive with my knees, too. And then we have wire down here and rocks to prevent digging from predators which we've had in the past and other coops so we learned our lesson with that. One of my favorite features is the bricks. I love that vintage feel and I love the whitewash although it's coming off faster than I thought so we're probably going to need to redo it every six months which is okay. And then and then we're, I'm going to plant something here. I think I'm going to do a passion vine to grow up on it. Another nest box. And then in the back, barn style door. 
So that way, when it's time to clean, just open it up and I'll be able to use a broom and sweep it all out right under the roost. We put the linoleum here to help with the poop not sticking to the wood and staining it and just deteriorate it faster because it will deteriorate much faster. So we're going to put some pine bedding in here to help absorb some of the poop. We just hadn't done that yet before the tour. We should have done that before the tour. But it'll be really handy to have this door to open it up to sweep all that out. Daddy Care's put this hardware cloth up here too to prevent critters from crawling in there too. And we have the nice ventilation too. Like Mama Kerbs already said, there is wire all the way around this. You can see that in earlier videos. We put the shingles here just to give us an easier place to step, keep the weeds and stuff out. We will eventually put rocks or concrete or something here. And then there's the barrier of the rocks all the way around to make it look cute and to give one more barrier for the, uh, the digging critters. Uh, it'll just make it a little less appealing, uh, a little harder to get through. Let's go inside. How about you go inside and show them inside and I'll follow you. Before we go in, I want to give you some of the details. This door was built using, let me back up, the entire structure was built using scrap materials. Only a few pieces of new materials was purchased, like the 1x12s that were uh, used on the nest boxes, but and of course some of the hardware, but most everything on this coop is repurposed, reclaimed, uh, recycled materials. Now, this hardware, this was a little bit tricky, uh, to get into the door, this is just regular slide bolt hardware, but this part right here, because of how the doors sit, I needed to, to bring this out. And it is reclaimed wood and it's a little bit soft, so I thought it would be nice to put these long bolts through the entire thing. So there's a, a nice big fat bolt head on the inside going through two 2x4s. Two and then using the double nuts here to hold this in place. Not the most elegant solution. It doesn't look super duper cute and pretty, but it absolutely does the job. And I feel like it's nice and strong, uh, considering that that wood is not, you know, new and, you know, it's just aged. Come on in. The floor at this point is still just the original dirt, and we will most likely put sand or compost or something in here to make that a little more appealing for the chickens uh, but that's uh, we have to figure that out later we do have the wood ash in the corner for them dust bathing giving uh, helping with their personal hygiene the watering solution is the farmer brad uh, it's not completely set up right now it's the uh, I just have this tucked in this is where it's going to be plugged in through, you know, probably just through the wire to a hose from the rainwater collection when that gets hooked up. In the meantime, it's just tucked in there to keep it out, you know, from dangling around. If you look inside this water bucket, there's a float valve, and that's going to help keep the bucket from overflowing. And then it goes down to those chicken drinkers. They're the side-mounted chicken drinkers or chicken nipples. And the chickens took real fast. All I had to do was come out here and touch the sides. And it dripped out some water. And they picked up on that real fast. Less messy. Much less mess. And once it gets hooked up to the uh, rainwater collection, we'll never... All I have to do is make sure that system's working every once in a while. And it looks like it's going to work just fine. These buckets are sold by a fellow YouTuber, Farmer Brad. You can look him up. And there is a coupon code uh, for a while. Using the coupon code Daddy Curbs, you can get a discount on these. I feel like the water stays cleaner that way. The water is much cleaner. It's a much nicer way to water the chickens. So the, fe the feature of the chicken house here, what we wanted, what we wanted on the chicken house was a place for the chickens to walk under. So they would have more ground space, more square footage to walk around. A nice place to come in at nighttime. 
uh, elevated off the ground, helping to prevent some of the ground attacks from the predators. And also, <clears throat> also we wanted to be able to give them a ramp and a door. We decided to make that the same uh, structure. And that just comes up like this, locks into place, and that will keep any of the, if, for example, a skunk, raccoon, possum, bobcat, whatever, would get through the wire and into this area, it would make one more barrier to get to the chickens at nighttime. So that's just, I feel like a pretty nice way for them to get in and out. You do have to be careful not to drop it though. On top of the chicken house part of the coop is the uh, half inch hardware cloth just like on the exterior. And we wanted that because we didn't want to close all this in and try to close all of the gaps. We wanted to be able to allow for maximum ventilation because here in Texas it's hot. But also we don't want anything to, like raccoons for example, if they ended up getting in, they would just climb in there and, and have a ball. So with, with the hardware cloth on top that would keep the raccoons out, hopefully they don't get into the coop at all. But if they would, at nighttime, It'll keep them out of here, and the door will keep them out from this area. This is not a snake-proof coop, but uh, it's going to be a little harder for the snakes to find their way in because if this were chicken wire with the one-inch openings, most of the, the snakes, like the, the rat snakes, would be able to climb through, eat their meal, and then they'd have to wait for a while to get back out, but they would be able to do that. The half-inch hardware cloth is rigid, and the openings are much smaller, and so the snakes can't get in. They'll probably find a way, just because there are openings, and snakes find openings. But uh, we did want to use the hardware cloth to make it a little harder for things to get in. The hardware cloth was mounted by stretching it. I had a friend come over. Thank you, Doug. He helped me stretch the wire over the 2x4s, uh, and then uh, we just used these boards over it and then put the screw straight through it so that instead of trying to find ways to staple or nail we just use these one by twos uh, to put the screws through to help hold that more tight and solid so it's pretty solid I think that it would take a pretty serious impact for an animal get, to get through that that's pretty much all the features of the coop that I can think of if you have any questions about how the coop is designed or built. Maybe I left something out. I would love to chat with you in the comments below. This has been a fun build and several of you have, have shared with us that you have enjoyed watching the coop being built. I wish I would have been a little more diligent to get every step of the process uh, on YouTube, but you know, sometimes things get in the way. Mama Curbs loves her silkies. And this coop is an attempt to give her silkies, her beautiful silkies, a, a place to live. Some place that will make Mama Curbs happy and the chickens happy. And really, that makes me happy. And I can see the coop from the kitchen window when I'm doing dishes. Yeah. The kitchen window is back here. Mama Curbs will sit in there sometimes or stand and look out that window. And she can see this coop. And because there was a lot of thought put into how it's built, it just makes her happy to see it. Do you hear her? Yeah. She's talking to you. She sounds happy too. <laughs> yes, she does. She's like, can I go back now? Yeah. Kay. Okay, this is nice. I'm Time camera shy. Paparazzi. Here on the Daddy Curbs Farm, we truly believe that everyone has a story and every story counts. Thank you so much for being a part of my story through this video today and letting me be a part of yours. We'll talk to you soon.